okay, everybody. I have got to begin today by showing you the tie I wore in honor of my wife for Mother's Day. Oh, that's cute. Easy in April. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Kathy Wilding. Great to have you back here at that beautiful organ. And uh, happy Mother's Day to everybody. A few announcements as we start our service today. Uh, I was so delighted to hear some good news. Recently, uh, Kat Cash, who's in the Fellowship Hall, her bike was stolen while she was at work at Vons. She was so bummed because if you've ever had a favorite bike as a kid, and then it's gone, you're like, oh, well, they happened to go to dinner to Denny's, I don't know, a day or two ago. And as they walked in, there the bike was. And so it was a happy ending. Uh, apparently the people who had it had bought it from somebody on the street. And so uh, nobody went to jail, but the bike was returned and it was a happy ending for everybody. So Kat can give you the details on that recovery. Uh, in your bulletin, I'm sure you noticed the little green envelope. And I had it, I probably dropped it somewhere. Uh, oh, here it is. Thank you so much for your support of our deacon's offering. It helps us to provide uh, gift cards from Smart and Final, sack lunches to people in our community that could use a little extra help. And uh, thanks for that, your monthly support of that. I'm so happy to see Clara here today, Clara White. God bless you, I'm so glad you're, and your daughter is here. Happy Mother's Day. I gotta tell you, in the, I think it's still in the fellowship hall, there's two posters of Clara and Clara, and it's the most fun thing to look at to try to figure out who's who when they're like 17, 22. Um, and so take a look at that before you leave today. It's really, really delightful. Want to tell you when we have communion later today, uh, you'll be coming forward as we've been doing. And uh, when you, the one thing I want to tell you right now is that when you get your communion, you're gonna come out this way. There's a cord right here in the ground. So just be aware that there is a cord there and, and step, just, we don't need anybody to trip. Okay, the last announcement I have today is many of us have been thinking about mothers and grandmas in Ukraine for obvious reasons right now with the war happening there. And, and it made me think about, you know, refugee women in general, caring for their kids, not knowing, you know, what's ahead of you. And I wanna light our peace candle today in honor of the moms and the grandmothers in Ukraine and I came across uh, what I thought was a really neat statement from the Vatican released on International Women's Day, which I think was a couple, couple months ago. And so this is the statement, and then we'll light the peace candle. This year's International Women's Day cannot fail to recognize the courage, strength, and ordeal endured in Ukraine, where women are forced to leave their homes to protect their children. These are women who pray, women who decide to stand by their husbands to resist the advancing tanks and exploding rockets, women breastfeeding in the rubble and under mortar fire, women taking part in rescue efforts, preparing food, giving birth to life, to new hope, waiting hours at the borders, moms driving cars and trucks because the country is under attack, Moms on the march with the few things they've been able to gather in the cold and in the snow. Outside Ukraine, other women are collecting aid, working in politics or in diplomatic circles to find solution, protesting in the streets, being arrested. 
women. Women, amazing women. Daughters, sisters, mothers, wives, and friends. All building societies, sustaining economies, bringing education and creativity, guarding creation, protecting humanity. In these hours, we entrust ourselves to Mary, the mother of Jesus, that all violence in Ukraine and in the world may come to an end, and every man and woman may live in peace. Friends, we light the peace candle this morning in honor of all women, thinking especially about the women of Ukraine, Afghanistan, and other refugee communities. This candle, a symbol of the power of God to lead us from darkness to light. We all believe, one of the reasons we're all here, we believe that God is love. And we still believe in the power of God to come and unite communities and together move from darkness to light. We light this candle today with that symbolism in mind. Now I invite all those who are able to please stand for the call to worship. I love thy church, O God. Dear as the apple of thine eye. Beyond my highest joy. Her sweet communion, solemn vows. Let us worship God, our hymn for to begin this Mother's Day worship service for the beauty of the earth, verses one through four. Let us continue our service by joining together in our morning prayer of confession. You'll find that in your bulletin. Let us pray. Creator God, you called Mary to be the mother of your son, Jesus. Your grace enabled her to love and raise a child who would change the world. 
We give thanks today for Mary and for all those women who teach children to be kind and compassionate, honest and generous, humble and self-giving, the very traits of Christ your Son. Forgive us for those times when the example we set for our children with our words and deeds does not reflect your love and mercy. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Please join me in a time for silent confession. Friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Be seated. Our scripture lessons this morning are not from the lectionary because I wanted to get something that really felt like tied into Mother's Day. And so I just prayed about it and, and these kind of two passages came to my head. And so our first lesson this morning is from the book of Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, fifth commandment. God said, honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land which the Lord your God gives you. That's the fifth commandment, honor your father and mother. Our second lesson is usually a uh, scripture passage we usually hear around Christmas. And thinking about the mothers in Ukraine, thinking about Mary, the mother of Jesus, having been with child also being on the run from oppressive authorities. Thought I'd preach on this passage today. Luke 2, 1 through 12, 15 to 19. Luke writes, in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria and all went to be enrolled each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in that region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch of their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all the people. 
For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Hey, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying which had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary kept all these things, pondering them in her heart. Here ends our second lesson. Thanks be to God. while reading from my favorite book of poetry published in 1937 by radio personality Major Bose, I came across a poem on page 159 entitled Mother Love. The author of the poem has never been identified. It is just six lines. Many of you, when you hear it, will go, oh yeah, I've heard that poem. When I read it, I thought to myself, if Jesus was a poet, he may have written verses much like these about his own mother, Mary. The poem also moved me because it reminded me of why I have so much gratitude in my heart for my own mother, Alice Crouch. And my gratitude that my own kids have a devoted mother, Suzanne. I also thought about moms who are now refugees caring for their children. The verses of this poem may reflect similar feelings you have about your mother on this Mother's Day. The unknown author of the poem, Mother Love, writes, A mother's smile, a mother's kiss, your life can hold no greater bliss. Each thought a hope, each word a prayer, she holds you in her loving care. God sent his spirit from up above and formed it into mother love. Friends, I think the phrase in that poem, each thought, a hope, each word, a prayer, expresses eloquently how Mary's life was such a gift in the life of Jesus. Surely Mary's prayers for Jesus' safety were constant, as was the hope she carried for the success of his itinerant ministry because that's how much she loved her people. Like Jesus, many of us have been blessed to be the child of a woman whose thought of us is rooted in relentless hope and prayer. And indeed, all creatures, great and small, need mother love in life, whether from a birth mother or from another caring woman they meet during life's journey. In terms of having a mom with tremendous character, humble, courageous, honest, and faithful, Jesus could not have been more blessed than he was to have had Mary as his mother. For just consider, after hearing she had been chosen by God, be the mother of God's son, one who would transform the world, Mary, that calling confirmed by her cousin Elizabeth, responded with humility in a spirit of gratitude, declaring, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my savior, for he has regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, henceforth, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. Imagine Jesus' reaction later in life when he heard that his mother had expressed that thanksgiving to God with such humility. And how it must have felt to him to realize how much Mary loved him as she anticipated his coming birth. Remember how excited you were when you carried your first child and, and knew 
the adventure that was ahead of you. The unknowns, but the great adventure and the sense of gratitude. When Jesus was 12 years old, and in fact, throughout his life, he was reminded of his mother's devotion to him. When he was 12, his mother, now in her late 20s, was upset because Jesus had left his family caravan while they were returning home from a pilgrimage to Jerusalem for Passover without telling her or his father that he was staying behind, 12 years old. When Mary finally found Jesus after three long days, sitting in the temple at the feet of the rabbis, she didn't say, my son, bless you. You have chosen your call to serve God with your life. No, that's not what mothers do, right? <laughs> Mary said, son, why have you treated us so? Your father and I have been looking for you anxiously. Where the heck have you been? Friends, imagine if your 12-year-old son or daughter was missing for one day, let alone three days. Frantic is the first word that comes to my mind. Jesus regrets how upset he made his mother. We can tell by the passage. But he's honestly confused, for he thought she, of all people, would know where he was. Jesus' immediate response to Mary suggests he and his parents had a very close relationship. For Jesus said to Mary, how is it that you sought me? The implication, how could you not know where I was? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? Luke says that Jesus returned to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. Of course he was obedient to them. We have no reason to think that Jesus hadn't always been true to the fifth commandment in regard to his parents. The teaching from Moses, which Jesus surely learned at a young age, honor your father and mother that your days may be long in the land which the Lord your God gives you. Honor your father and mother. Luke says, after this incident at the temple, Mary pondered everything that happened in her heart. Friends, her son was her whole life, and she could sense powerful things were unfolding in his life even at the tender age of 12. Now, it wasn't the first time Luke referred to thoughts swirling in Mary's heart. In the passage we heard this morning about the shepherds coming to the manger in Bethlehem, with the news the angel had shared with them of the birth of a Savior, Christ the Lord, one wrapped in swaddling cloth just as baby Jesus now was dressed, Mary, having heard the amazing news, says Luke, kept all these things, pondering them in her heart. That's what good mothers do. They reflect on what is happening or has happened in their children's lives. Mothers celebrate what is happening right in front of them. And then they think about the implications this news may have for the life of their child. I always felt like my mom, Alice, was always one step ahead, thinking ahead, what's next? I believe that from the time Jesus, a baby, could crawl, his mother's smile, her kiss, was for him sweet bliss. From the examples in scripture, it is obvious Jesus felt so thankful from a young age for his mother's prayers and hopes for him, and knew Mary would be a deep source of comfort and strength all his life. And knowing the kids that are here today, I know that you too share that wonderful feeling that my mom's comfort and strength will be with me today and forever. And indeed, Mary was there when Jesus, her son, took his last breath on the cross. 
On this Mother's Day, I'm giving thanks for my mom, Alice. I'm also thankful that my own adult children have such a devoted mother. I'm giving thanks for all the women in church today, mothers, grandmothers, aunts, teachers, coaches. Thankful for the, all those watching on YouTube. For like Mary, the mother of Jesus, I know you women here today. And you have been and are a source of strength and comfort and of yes, in the words of the poem, Mother Love. And I assure you that your prayers of the past as well as today make a profound difference in the lives of your children and grandchildren. Not only that, but in the life of your nieces and neighbors and nephews. Mother love, a forever gift, never to be taken lightly. As I said earlier, I'm also thinking today about mothers around the world, including mothers who just three months ago were living normal lives as they raised their children and grandchildren in Ukraine. And I wanna share with you this Mother's Day morning the story of one such devoted mother in Ukraine named Yaroslava Antipina. Like all mothers in Ukraine and those who suddenly live amid war, Yaroslava's world was turned upside down. Such that, such that just having an ordinary morning cup of coffee would become something for which she would be extremely grateful. Starting a couple months ago from her home in the city of Kiev in Ukraine, she shared with people around the world during her morning cup of coffee, what she now calls war coffee, the true impact of war. Lee Cohen of CBS News this past March in an interview wrote, Yaroslava Antipina prefers her war coffee black, no sugar. Every day she sips on the cup watching a deadly assault unfold outside her window as her life strays further from the one she's always known. Yaroslava has turned her Twitter account into a real-time diary of what it is truly like to be an ordinary person living through war, documenting her experience, posting photos, since she awoke to the sound of explosions in Kiev and the start of war. It's hard to even, for us to even comprehend waking up to the sound of explosions. With multiple updates every day, she has amassed more than 86,000 followers as she details the constant roller coaster of emotions, thoughts, and experiences. She a proud Ukrainian and a devoted mom. It all started on February 24th she wrote in her diary these words, 11.45 p.m. in Kiev. We decided that we'll sleep only a little fully dressed. The backpacks and one suitcase are ready. Yaroslava and her teenage son tried to stay in Kiev, stocking up on food and staying indoors with only the sounds of explosions breaking a stressful silence. Yaroslava's mother, who lives in Western Ukraine, had been calling her crying and worried over the situation. Her daughter, her 19-year-old grandson. Five days after the, after the invasion, they decided to go be with Yaroslava's mom. The day they left, March 1st, Antipina posted a photo of a small gray hard shell suitcase. Underneath the photo, she tweeted, it's all I can take with me. All my life is in this bag. This moment has stuck with her ever since. The small gray suitcase, she told CBS News, represents the despair and leaving a sense of normalcy behind. Said Yaroslava, I don't know, still don't know if I can ever return. It's not just the things I'll miss, the belongings. It's about memories, people, everything I had. 
She continues, and I know that I'm lucky because I know some people moved on without anything just with the clothes they wore. Yaroslava says she would give anything to go back in time. Any problems she dealt with don't seem like such a big deal anymore. She said, war is a problem. Moments before leaving their beloved home, Yaroslava took a final look outside their window. A view of Kiev's newly barren streets as people hid and fled amid freshly fallen snow. That day was the first time it had snowed in Kiev all February. Said Yaroslava to her Twitter followers, 11.02 a.m. somewhere in Kiev. I took my last view from my window. My heart is crying. We're escaping. Before all this began, Yaroslava said, she had an ordinary life. She started every morning with coffee and sweets. She worked both in the office and from home during the week, and on weekends would enjoy a cappuccino, listen to podcasts, read books. She didn't realize how normal her life was at the moment. Now, very few people roam the streets of her city and children are rarely seen in public. It feels as though years have passed, she said. CBS News spoke with Yaroslava. She and her son were now in her mother's home, trying to keep sense of what she calls that life. Said Yaroslava, I lived two different lives. In that life, before the war, I had peace. I had my regular activities. And in this life, I have a war. I will never have that life back because I've changed. Our cities have changed. We Ukrainians have changed. In this life, her sister and her sister's three young children have fled the country. Her son, as I said, 19, has not joined Ukraine's territorial defense forces but he said he will if and when it becomes necessary. Said Yaroslava, if he goes to fight to the territorial defense or army, I will join too. It's impossible for me just to sit here when my son is fighting. It's impossible. It's also scary because my only child will be in war. Yaroslava talks about her war coffee in her tweets. There's nothing physically unique about the drink, but it acts as a tangible reminder that everything she craves, loves, and desires is fragile, from the simple to the profound, as every passing moment of war could bring a more difficult circumstance. Said Yaroslava, war coffee is resistance, strength, we Ukrainians need such things to survive, to be strong. Because for me, the very hard thing right now is the uncertainty. You don't know what's going on the next day, next week, but we will manage. We have no choice. Friends, I'll never take a cup of coffee in the morning for granted. People from all around the world have responded to Yaroslava's tweets with their love and their coffee in hand. Photos of coffee mugs have flooded her replies from Tennessee, Seattle, Illinois, and countless other places, east, west, north, and south. Keeping the diary has helped her cope with the situation and remember how things have evolved. But she said, her diary is also for future generations. Said Yaroslava, I write in order to show them what the world really is for you, for us, for ordinary people, and how our life can be changed in one second, and how important it is to keep this peace and to be strong in any situation. Friends, Yaroslava Antipina is still drinking war coffee and tweeting daily from her beloved homeland of Ukraine. 
Kathy Chandler of Southern California, is one of the 86,000 folks who have been inspired by Yaroslava's post on Twitter. She too, a devoted mother, has known how war can turn your life upside down. In her case, it was trying to remain hopeful and strong while her son was deployed to war in the Middle East. Yaroslava's diary reminded Kathy how important it is in dark times to find a place of refuge in your life. I close this morning with Kathy Chandler's hard-won words of wisdom inspired by fellow mother, Yaroslava Antapina. Kathy writes, my son was deployed to some real hellscapes. He would dodge artillery, IEDs, and small arms fire on a daily basis. I was terrified I'd lose my only son. I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat. I expected a visit from the chaplain at any time. Such fear tears at the heart and gnaws at the soul, extracting and dashing all optimism. One day I received a letter from my son. He told me what he was most excited for with one month left, one month left in his deployment. He said he dreams of sitting in a Starbucks, drinking a fine cup of Arabica bean coffee while reading a newspaper. That is some people's dream. He didn't dream of a Caribbean vacation or a new car, she said. All he wanted was a simple place of refuge, a place where smiles and conversation abound. A daily routine of peace coffee restored his soul. It would restore mine as well, she said. Kathy Chandler concludes with a question for all mothers in the United States and Ukraine and other places. Where are you getting your daily cup of peace coffee? The world feels torn asunder. War rages in Ukraine. A million people in the UF have died from COVID. The West is suffering through its worst drought in 1,200 years. We are hurting and we need to take care of ourselves. Says Kathy, please engage the world, protest, donate money, pray or write letters of support, do what you can, but also find your own place of refuge, whether that be a coffee shop or a hiking trail. Embrace your cup of peace coffee and don't give in to despair. A rejuvenated heart and soul will thank you. Christians don't have the luxury to give in to despair. We are people who carry hope from today and into the future. That's part of our call, to be people of hope who trust in the presence of the love of God yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Who don't see any of the evil in the world, war, as God's will but know that God is actively working with us to lead our children and grandchildren to a better day. I believe in that God. I believe in the power of love still. I won't let the evidence of what's around us destroy that hope in me. It's one of the ways that I honor my mother and my grandmother keep the faith. Friends, may Yaroslava Antipina one day enjoy a cup of peace coffee. Let us now share in the rejuvenation which comes from a simple piece of bread and cup of juice, the gift of the Lord's Supper. This supper, received in faith, can be for us a spiritual refuge, a moment in time in which we experience the steadfast and healing presence of Mary's son, Jesus of Nazareth. He died, he lives. Happy Mother's Day to Mary of Nazareth, to Yaroslava Antipina, to Kathy Chandler, to you all. Amen.
communion. So if you feel like you would like to join in this supper today, we welcome you. Uh, after the words of institution, you'll be coming down the center of the sanctuary, beginning at the front of the church and moving to the back. You'll, I will be paced, placing a piece of bread in your hand, and you'll immediately commune with the bread. And then you'll take a cup of juice and drink the juice. And there's a, uh, right as you go back around to your seats this way, there's a basket over here for you to put in your cups. And I want to thank Chris Cash for assisting this morning. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. Women and men will come from east and west and north and south to sit at the table of the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. And our Savior invites all those who trust in him to share the feast that he has prepared. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took the bread and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Let us pray. Holy Lord, Father Almighty, merciful Mother, everlasting God, we thank you for commanding light out of darkness, for dividing the waters into sea and dry land, for creating the whole world and calling it good. We thank you for making us in your image to live with each other in love, for the breath of life, the gift of speech, and freedom to choose your way. You have told us your purpose and commandments to Moses, and called for justice in the cry of the prophets. Through long generations, you have been fair and kind to all your children. Great and wonderful are your works, Lord God Almighty. Your ways are just and true. With women and men of faith from all times and places, lift our hearts in joyful praise, for you alone are holy. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it. He gave this bread to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same manner after supper, the Lord Jesus took the cup. Jesus said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink ye all of it. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The gifts of God for the people of God. Amen. Friends, come and receive mother love.
Let us pray. Gracious God, you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. You have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of forgiveness. You've renewed us for your service. Help us who have shared Christ's body and received his cup to be his faithful disciples. So that our daily living may be part of the life of your kingdom and our love be your love, reaching out into the life of the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We, we invite you now with our COVID protocol greeting to look at your neighbors <laughs> and give them a wave or a peace sign <laughs> or whatever moves you. <laughs> Let us continue in prayer, let us pray. Eternal God, on this Mother's Day, we thank you for the women in our lives who help empower, encourage, challenge, and comfort us with mother love. We give thanks for all the work they have done, the lessons they have shared, and the sacrifices they have made in the name of love. We pray for those in our congregation whose mothers have passed away, and who feel some sadness amidst their joy on this day. We pray for those women who wanted to be mothers, but for whatever reason were not able. This can be a hard day for them, so Lord, give them an extra measure of your grace. We thank you, O oh God, for all those women who use their skills to strive to make a better world for all. We thank you for Robin Harris, home safe from her journey to Poland, to share mother love with refugee families there. Dear God, hear us now as we share with you in silence the joys and concerns on our hearts this day, mothers and fathers. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, to these unspoken prayers of our hearts, we also offer prayers for all who are ill, for those who are facing the challenges of aging, for all who mourn. We pray, O oh God, for Beverly Henry as she stands with her husband Gary in his time of illness. Bless Beverly, give her peace and calm as she follows your lead in caring for her husband. We pray for mothers who have lost their children to school shootings. We pray for single mothers who face the challenges of parenthood alone, and yet with tremendous courage and determination. We pray for mothers who are separated from their children due to the violence of people or governments. We pray for mothers of special needs children who've helped their children to discover a deep sense of self-worth and joy to realize they too have unique gifts to offer the world. We pray for women in this nation whose freedom and autonomy are in peril due to government overreach and oppressive theology from the church. We pray, O oh God, that you would make us all more like Jesus, humble in spirit, generous, compassionate, forgiving, bold to confront injustice, willing to pay the cost of discipleship, 
determined to climb the mountains before us, to dream of a better world, and then do what we can to help achieve it. Well, God, we pray that you would give us all such a deep sense of gratitude for the earth and its creatures, that we would do all in our power to protect, preserve, and defend them. Make us good stewards of your creation. Lord, thank you for Jesus' example to us and for giving him a devoted mother, Mary, whose heart was a schoolroom of wisdom and nurture for him. Help us to set the bar high as your church so that together we might be the body of Christ in the world, sharing Christ's love and justice. Hear us now as we pray the prayer that Mary's son Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, my friends, with hope, even joy in our hearts, responding to the call of God to be peacemakers in this world, truly instruments of God's peace, will all who are able please stand as we close our service singing Savior again to thy dear name we raise, number 539. Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all.